Right, finally got round to doing um, part four on the Rogers C33 speakers that um, you probably saw in the other, other videos. So I started from scratch with these with some crappy cabinets I bought. Um, got the drivers, got the, uh, the tweeter, we made a crossover for it. Um, and these were going to take the place of the Monitor Audio HD 250s that I've got um, in my lounge. And we set these up on stands against the wall because if I was going to keep these, these would be an on-wall speaker. Um, and spent probably five hours on a Friday night listening to them. Um, doing A B comparisons with the monitor audio speakers and these, um, and these are just just better. Um, they've turned out really well. Um, uh, long and the short of it is though, we're not going to have them in the lounge. The um, these boxes are a bit bigger. Um, the monitor audio speakers just look really nice. Um, whilst I could make some really good covers for these. <sighs> Yeah, um, so they've ended up in our snug, which is um, a good place. I spend a lot of time listening to music in there. Um, and they've taken the place of some smaller speakers in there. And I'm really happy with that. The monitor audio speakers, we're going to upgrade at some point anyway. So um, there'll be a video on that. Um, I'm hoping, um, because they're, they're a great speaker and they do have some shortfalls, I'm hoping I can almost offer a kit for them. Um, I think I found a really good silk dome tweeter to take the place of the C-cam metal tweeter that's in them. Um, the crossover, there's bound to be some upgrades we can do to that and we'll measure them properly and see if we can adjust that crossover to improve them as well. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for that. But anyway, yeah, these are a great speaker. Um, and having listened to them with the original Rogers crossovers, um, and then listen to them with the crossovers that I produced, which was basically a copy of what was already in there, but using air core inductors, a really good polypropylene capacitors, really good resistor, um, and great wiring, um, brass binding posts. The difference was night and day. Um, this tweeter is fantastic, really, really good, <clears throat> handles lots of power, doesn't break up, um, which was the issue with the monitor audio speakers. Really, really pleased with that. Um, and the mid-range, great bass as well. Uh, we were quite surprised. I mean, these are five inch woofers, five and a quarter inch woofers. Um, and they really, really came alive. Um, they would handle lots of power. You know, two of these as a stereo pair. They were great. They really are. Um, great clarity. Um, and because of the good components and probably because of the um, felt front baffle so much of the music we listened to we didn't hear the speakers um, and that's the idea the speakers just disappeared good um, central image for the vocals um, instruments were placed well they were great um, so it's a shame they're not going to end up in the lounge but really really happy with them so now that they're finished, the only thing I need to do is just replace these screws with black screws because um, that's just going to look better and um, shoot some measurements and see what we've got. But it's going to be interesting to see how they measure um, because I know how they sound and they sound really good. Um, there is nothing fatiguing, there's nothing spiky. Um, they're just very, very nice to listen to um, with pretty much everything. So. Yeah, let's do that. Um, and then that, that sort of concludes um, this video. If um, anyone out there does have these um, and is considering upgrading them, I mean, they're a centre channel, really. Um, watch the videos on the crossover work I did because it's a really easy upgrade and um, you will pull a lot out of these. Don't underestimate what that can do. Um, so, yeah, let's uh, get on with some measurements. I think it's also worth mentioning um, about this arrangement, the um, mid-tweeter mid, -tweeter mid uh, Diapolito design. Um, 
primarily you see this in center channels because if you put two drivers in this arrangement the acoustic center becomes the middle between them um, and if you have the tweeter there as well you've kind of created a coaxial driver almost um, which means off-axis response vertically and horizontally is really good um, and I'm a really big fan of this arrangement I mean, normally you just see this a tweeter, a mid or mid bass woofer, and then maybe in a three way a woofer down the bottom. Um, but this arrangement, um, yeah, is really, really good. And if I was going to build my own um, floor standing speakers, which I hope to one day, it will be this arrangement with, I don't know, probably two eight or 10 inch woofers at the bottom. Um, so, yeah, maybe one day I'll do that. But, yeah. This is a really good arrangement, so um, if you're thinking of building your own speakers, I'd kind of recommend this. Um, it's got a lot of advantages. Anyway, let's get on with those measurements. Right, so finished with the measurements on um, on these, and quite surprising, there's about 3k hertz reasonable dip um, which you've probably seen in the measurements um, 5 or 6 dB quite a bit um, so the mid woofers are rolling off and the tweeter is rolling off and at that crossover point um, yeah, really, the woofers want to play up a little bit higher, or the tweeter wants to play up a little bit lower. Sorry, play down a little bit lower. Um, but you don't hear that. When I'm listening to music, um, it's just not apparent. Um, it's fairly high up in the frequency range. So, um, But also, I, I think what's happening is um, when the speakers are against the wall, which they're designed to be, um, you're probably getting some baffle gain, which is probably lifting that area back up. Um, I haven't measured them that way, pushed them against a board or something to see if I get some baffle gain there, but I, I think that's probably what's happening. Um, but uh, yeah, otherwise, really nice and smooth. Um, and again, it's quite reassuring with the measurements to see how well this measurement space is performing. Um, I know there's a little peak at about 200 hertz, um, but not much. Otherwise, I can measure down fairly low in here because um, it is dead. So it is working well. Um, so yeah, I'm still very, very pleased with these. Um, spectral decay or the waterfall doesn't show any stored energy. Um, so they are playing and stopping, doing what they should do. Um, yeah, very happy, but like I say, it's just a bit strange to have that dip, um, but I, I think that's reinforced with uh, baffle gain when it's against the wall, so I'm not worried about that, because um, these instruments here tell me they sound lovely, so yeah, all good. Anyway, um, so these are finished now, um, I've got some other speakers in, um, so I'll get videos up on those soon, and uh, yeah, thanks again for watching, hope these are being of interest to people um, if I can help with any of your projects um, email addresses at the end of the video uh, I'm based in Devon um, I do this sort of work all the time um, yeah so shout if I can help with anything you need so okay thanks for watching